A prominent autism researcher and vaccine opponent was found dead floating in the North Carolina River last week under what many are calling suspicious circumstances. A fisherman found the body of Dr. James Jeffrey Bradstreet in the Rocky Broad River in Chimney Rock, North Carolina. Bradstreet had a gunshot wound to the chest which appeared to be self-inflicted according to deputies. In a press release, the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office announced divers from the Henderson County Rescue Squad responded to the scene and recovered a handgun from the river. An investigation into the death is ongoing and the results of an autopsy are also reportedly forthcoming. Dr. Bradstreet ran a private practice in Buford, Georgia, which focused on treating children with autism spectrum disorder, PPD, and related neurological and developmental disorders. Among various remedies, Dr. Bradstreet's wellness center reportedly carried out mercury toxic toxicity treatments, believing the heavy metal to be a leading factor in the development of childhood autism. Dr. Bradstreet undertook the effort to pinpoint the cause of the disease after his own child developed the ailment following routine vaccination. Autism taught me more about medicine than medical school did, the doctor once stated at a conference, according to Jake Crosby. In addition to treating patients, Bradstreet has also offered expert testimony in federal court on behalf of vaccine-injured families and was founder and president of the International Child Development Resource Center, which at one time employed the much-scorned autism expert Dr. Andrew Wakefield as research director. Who do your children actually belong to? And if we do not get uh, William Thompson before a congressional series of committees that unearth the precise nature and extent of the fraud at the CDC... That's the big whistleblower. That is the big whistleblower. Then if we do not do that, and if we lose this battle, your children, you, will be owned by the pharmaceutical industry and your children and your children's children. The circumstances surrounding Bradstreet's death are made all the more curious by a recent multi-agency raid led by the FDA on his offices. The FDA has yet to reveal why agents searched the office of the doctor, reportedly a former pastor who has been controversial for well over a decade. Social media pages dedicated to Bradstreet's memory are filled with the comments from families who say the deceased doctor impacted their lives for the better. Dr. Bradstreet was my son's doctor after my son was diagnosed with autism. He worked miracles, one Facebook user states. At 16, my son is now looking at a normal life thanks to him. I thank him every day. I will forever be grateful and thankful for Dr. Bradstreet's recovering my son from autism, another person writes. Treatments have changed my son's life so that he can grow up and live a normal, healthy life. Dr. Bradstreet will be missed greatly. A GoFundMe page has also been set up by one of Bradstreet's family members seeking to find the answers to the many questions leading up to the death of Dr. Bradstreet, including an exhaustive investigation into the possibility of foul play. Despite his family's requesting the public refrain from speculation, many are nevertheless concluding the doctor's death to be part of a conspiracy. In 2009, the U.S. Court of Federal Claims found Bradstreet's research claiming causation between autism and environmental and mercury exposure and his testimony about links between a young patient's autism and his MMR vaccination, which were published in non-peer-reviewed journals, to be unconvincing and unsupported by evidence. The biomarkers are coming to us, and together we're able to create a plan that puts this entire mess together. And this is a slide that Dr. Um, Nataf at uh, Laboratory Philippe Augustin in Paris put together for me. I love this slide. It's all of that together. The environmental insults, the genes, the immunological consequences, oxidative stress, and all of that coming together to create this issue that we call autism. So I am hopeful, and you had better be hopeful and persistent or you're not going to get the job done. John Bound for InfoWars.com.